Okay, here I am right here with Paul. I've got your work up right here. And one thing I want to mention is, is it's a really a great idea to give like a little written, if you can take a look, a lot of, a lot of your, your classmates give a little bit of a written rationale, a brief synopsis of their experience with the assignment. And I think that's really important because it helps me kind of determine where you're at. And by me knowing where you're at, kind of gauges and tells me where we can go, what you're understanding and how you're you're absorbing the, um, the material. So it's really a great idea to just, it doesn't have to be long, just a, a brief synopsis of your experience with the assignments. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look. Excuse me, <coughs> I've been at this all day, so I'm starting to lose my voice by now, so uh, please forgive me. All right, I think you've done a good job, I really do. I think this is, is very, very good, actually. Um, nice tonality which really the, 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 the contrast allows us to see these, these, these optical relationships associated with the different letter forms, and that's fantastic. So your final, def, definitely want to preserve that, um, that contrast. So make sure you use that nice soft lead. Looks like the B is a little bit lighter in tonality than the rest of the letters. Looks like you were a little shy with your, the pressure at your, your uh, lead on that one. So watch that going into final two, watch your consistency. Um, I think your letter spacing is good. It seems that it's normal letter spacing, which is we're instructed to space these letters at what we would consider to be normal. And that's great. Right now, I think you're a little bit close in some areas, but that's okay. You're, you're not too far. There's not a great distance here. I think the eye is able to look at this and see the, the mind picks it up as one word, banana. And that's the beauty of good letter spacing is that the eye, is, the, the eye tells the brain this is one word and not a series of letters that improves the speed of reading and the overall efficiency of the typeset. And that kind of expands itself, that theory expands itself out to uh, word spacing, line spacing, paragraph spacing, and ultimately the spacing of the typography on a page. So as if the mind can see, if the eye sees um, optimal spacing, the mind doesn't stop. The mind just goes through and reads, you know, series of words instead of every single word. Or in this case, in a single word, it reads the word. The mind picks this up as a word and not a series of letters. And that's the importance of letter spacing or kerning in typography. I, I see that you've got your, your baseline and your main line and cap height, your cap line drawn very, very lightly. I don't mind if you draw them a little darker. I, I'm perfectly fine with that. But the one thing I do want to mention, and if you've looked at some of the other um, critiques, video critiques, I've mentioned this to just about every student. And a few students have gotten with me via email and said, hey, this doesn't make sense. Can you describe this to me? And yes, and what I'm talking about is this right here. The instructions say to begin draw a baseline, mean line, a cap line. On the marker paper and I want you to stop for a second and think after reviewing this week's course materials I want you to think about that comment for a second tell me why it might not be completely accurate now Paul if you're thinking that the the mean line and the cap line are is not something you can draw on a piece of paper you need the, the typeface or the font in order to establish the mean line and the cap line right mean line and cap line are not universal you can't just draw three lines Right, so, so what you would have to do is, and, and I want you to do this moving into your final presentation, is draw the, the baseline, make sure it's perfectly parallel. I'm sorry, it's, it's perfectly level. Okay, excuse me. <coughs> make sure that, that baseline is perfectly level. Use a T-square if you have to, I'm fine with that. Uh, get that baseline, then trace out your cap B, or at least make little marks as where the, the, height, the cap height is going to be. Then draw your cap line, make sure it's perfectly parallel, equidistant all the way through from the base, the baseline to the cap line. Then trace your lowercase a, your first lowercase a. You don't have to space it yet. You just want to kind of trace it there, get the relationship down so you can establish your mean line. Then make sure all three lines are perfectly parallel. Um, a very, very important step is to make sure those lines are parallel equidistant all the way, no fluctuations whatsoever. At that point, you can start laying your letters down. I think those guides will really, really help quite a bit. Now, it looks like you have guides in here, but again, the, the, that, that uh, placing the mean line and the cap line before pay, placing the letters is a little bit misleading. So think about that as well. Now, 
once you get your lines in place, you want to start thinking about letter spacing, all right, or kerning. And the rule here is this, and again, the reason is so that the mind is able to pick this up as one word and not a series of letters. So we have to think about volume. And the best way to think about kerning is to think about the volume between letters. Okay, so if I were to take a pitcher of water and fill this area, the negative space between the cap B and the small a, it should fill up the same rate as the distance between the, a, the straight sides, the A and the N. Now forget about this part right here. Just imagine that that's closed right there. Otherwise, it would never work because there's all this open space right here, right? So just imagine that's not there. So just imagine there's a line right there, and that fills up the same rate as this, equal, uh, indicating equal volume between letter forms. So the general rule of thumb while kerning is this. Two curved letters should have the tightest kerning, okay? Then the next then uh, the next widest kerning would be between a straight and a curved, and the widest spacing between letters should be between the straight and the straight, okay? So in this particular word, banana, your narrowest space between letters would be between the B and the A. Then comes the space between the N and the A, and the widest space would be between the A and the N, seeing as those are wider, those are straight letter forms, and the volume would have to be opened up there to accommodate for the curves found in the curves or the curve found between the curve and the straight letter form. Okay, makes sense? It's a key principle. If it doesn't make sense, let me know, and I'll, I'll try to, um, to think of a different way to, to describe it. But that, I think, is the most accurate way to describe volume between letters and how that is associated with uh, letter spacing and kerning. Okay, so um, that those are my recommendations moving forward. I think your letter forms are great. I mean, I, I, I really do. I think that the A is a nice depiction. You got that counter, boy, you got that down pat. Right now, I think that the, the relationship between this curve and the end of this A, I think you're a little bit wide through there, but you are showing, the, watch that variable stroke there, that variable width. In other words, it's thinner right here than it is right there. So you've got that depicted pretty well. I think the B is, is good. Got a little bit of an inconsistency right there in the B. Um, but for the most part, you're, you're, doing, you're doing very well, I think. So um, moving into your final presentation, go ahead and employ those little tactics and those little techniques and those little tips and rules for spacing and, um, and establishing your baseline, mainline, cap line. And of course, please let me know if you have any questions. All right, Paul, good job. Looking forward to seeing your final. And again, any questions, give me a holler. Thanks, man.